Hey everybody, welcome back to Spoon FPV. I'm about to show you how to build my racing rig here. This is the Secret Weapons uh, BX5. They make it in a 4 inch, a 5 inch, and a stretch 5. Uh, it's a light frame. I mean, it's no secret that I really like that frame. That's what's like mainly hanging on my wall back there, and it's what I race on race day. So, uh, before we get into the actual build video on this, I've laid out my table here with like you can't see it, but I'll, I'll jump to that uh, with everything that I need for this build. And um, I, my goal is to not grab anything that's not on the table already and to go through this with with you uh, to show you, you know, the parts that you're going to need for the quad and the tools that you're going to need. So this is the the first part in the, in the series on, on the build video, which is the tools required and the at the extra like kind of gotcha parts so that you can you know order all this stuff and have it ready because like it's you know the standoffs the shrink tube the zip it it, it really sucks to to be building be in the middle of your build and not have all of the parts that you got so hopefully i got this right and i didn't miss anything um and i'll put links in the description down below for all the parts and the tools you know if uh some and i do use affiliate links and some of them will be affiliate links and I, you know if you use those i get a little bit of kickback on those but uh the things that i don't have affiliate links for i i will put a link to that as well you know like that's that's how I operate. So if, if, if I don't have a deal with somebody, I'm not going to, I'm still going to put their link in there. So, uh, let's get into it. All right. So I kept trying to frame this shot, uh, several times and to do it static, but it, you know, this is, this is the best that I can do is handheld to try and get it all in. So this is my table that I have set up here. And the, like I said, my goal is to not grab anything that's like in a box somewhere so that, uh, we're going through all of this. So we have the the hardware on this side that we're going to be using, and then as we go to this side, this is the tools that are going to be that are going to be needed for the build. So obvious hardware here is like we have the frame. This is the the BX5, and this one is their five inch, just regular X frame. They have a stretch X, and they do a stretch four inch as well. So, and uh, you're going to need a set of motors. Uh, you know any. 2205 or 23 2206 or 20 what is it yeah 2306 now that they're doing any of those will work uh, i'm giving you think of like this as a recipe to follow uh i'm so you can pick whatever motors you want if, if you pick the exact hardware that i that i that i specify for this you know that the tune is going to work so the motors that i'm using for my tune are the RS the Emacs RS 2205S 2600KV motors that's what I use on my racing quads I think that they're the perfect balance between uh, a lightweight motor and power so I really like uh, those those motors the uh, but yeah pick whatever motors you want uh, they'll fit the other so an X build is actually kind of tight because some of the some of the components here basically I'm saying you should use that component exclusively because like the beta flight f3 board this is the flight controller that you should use in, in it uh, simply because it's going to make your build uh, you uh, I know that this is going to fit right like there are other flight controllers that won't fit in this X in this X style frame um, the ESC it doesn't really matter which ones that you guys that you picked uh, these are the new uh, the Wraith like 32-bit ESCs. The other ones that I really like are the Icon, um, the the 30 amp uh, Icon ESCs. Like either one of those ESCs would be a good choice for this. But you know, pick your ES ESC. It doesn't really matter. Like they're all of them will work with my tune uh, as long as it is a you know 30 amp rated or higher ESC. It's going to fit and it BL Heli S. Um, uh, yeah, so BL Heli S 30 amps. And it's going to work, but if you want to if you want to pick ESCs that I know for sure are going to work, the Icon 30 amp or these uh, Wraith BL Heli 32 uh, bit ones, uh, this is going to be my first build with these. So we'll find out together how they fly at the end of this. The you're going to need a uh, receiver for your transmitter. So the receiver that I'm going to use in this is the Free Sky XM Plus. This one will fit, and then the uh, XSR fits in there, and then everything else is kind of tight, 
but uh, this will fit nicely in there and I really like this receiver especially with a board that has the OSD on it uh, whatever antenna you want to use circular polarized would be would probably be a good choice the, I'm going to use the the TBS uh, uh, Unify antenna um, just simply because that's all I could find in stock I really like the the Lumineer uh, Axie antenna for uh, my builds like my race quads because it, it, it's a really it's a good antenna that's really small and tight but like they're out of stock everywhere so uh, this is what I could get my hands on so that's what I'm building this one with you're gonna need a set of props I'd recommend the V1S props by HQ uh, I'm you know that they're gonna work with the tune uh, HQ uh, I know HQ has a rep uh, reputation for having props that like break when you look at them wrong but now they're doing this year they've been doing durable props and like these these will take a thrashing so I'll, you know, and I'll put links for all this stuff in the description like I said uh, the TBS uh, Unify V2 not the HV or the race HV because the this is the smallest uh, high quality VTX that you can get on the market now so this is pretty much the only VTX that's gonna fit the way that I'm going to mount it uh, other you might be able to fit some other VTXs. I've seen the HV on there, but I, I I think it's a little big to fit on the back of the the quad the way that I that I do it. Um, this is going to be my first build with this camera. So the Runcam Mini. Uh, I so we'll find out how well this fits together uh, on there. Uh, but I know that the all of the the run cams, the Fox ears, like all of those cameras fit, but they're very very tight. So if you look at my build here. I don't know if you can see that. Is that well lit? But it's basically almost right up against the board, and I really don't like that. But that's, um, you know, that's that's how it fits. And I like I'm stuck with that camera angle, and that's fine because I like that camera angle. But uh, yeah, that so. If you like to run, you know, 45 degrees of tilt, which you should want a race build, but you know, that's again matter of personal preference. Um, then this can this camera body like the, the full size camera body is fine but i'm i'm thinking that we should probably go with a the a a micro camera so that we can get a little bit more uh, camera tilt angle in there so those are kind of all the obvious pieces of hardware bits that you're going to need for your build uh, the other the things that are not so obvious is you're going to need an XT60 connector um, and you're going to need some either 12 gauge or 14 gauge wire a little an inch and a half of that uh, I like to use a high quality silicone wire um, you can use that you're gonna need four of these nylon uh, standoffs uh, so th they do come in aluminum and I will leave the link for the aluminum ones as well if you ch choose to use these um, I, this is this is what I prefer I prefer the aluminum ones for myself but you're not um, there's it's really hard to isolate uh, the the flight controller like electronically from the frame and you can run into ground loop issues and all sorts of electronic issues so I would highly recommend that you use the nylon ones to avoid any of those those issues that I'm talking about uh, all of the between the the ESC's and the or not the ESC's the between the motors and the frame like it comes with all the mounting hardware that you need I like to, to to kind of put my own flair on it by putting, uh, you know, these uh, anodized aluminum screws on there, so you you can see that there's, you know, purple anodized aluminum all over this, and you can get it in uh, multiple colors. So these are M3 uh, aluminum ones that are M3 by six millimeters, and you'll need 20 of those, and these are M3 by uh, eight millimeters in length and you'll need four of those to to complete this build if you if you decide to, to buy that hardware uh, zip ties you're gonna need zip ties or you know electrical tape like or both actually uh, shrink tube this is kind of a, a neat little kit that comes with a bunch of sizes and it was pretty cheap from Amazon I'll put that link in there for sure uh, the more shrink tube this is the PVC shrink tube this is for like ESC's and the to re-shrink the, the TBS, so the, yeah, I'll put a link in for that. You're going to need a battery strap and some Velcro. And the other thing is there is this um, 
you can get this TPU camera protector from Secret Weapons. I don't I don't personally run it on my uh, on my rigs, but if you if you wanted this, you know, I'll show you what it looks like on an actual quad. I run it on my I run them on my Acura rigs. So this is one of my freestyle quads, and that's what it looks like with the camera mounted inside of there. So it kind of helps protect the camera a little bit. Um, and then, so that's it for the hardware side of what you're gonna need to build. So that should be all the hardware that you're gonna need to build the, the BX5. Now, you're gonna need a laptop running uh, BL Heli and uh, Betaflight for this build. You're gonna need a good quality soldering iron. If you don't have a good quality soldering iron, this one, the, the Hako uh, FX888D is a really good soldering iron. I'm not, and I'm not one for buying expensive tools just because, you know, they're, but like this is, and it, you know, it's a hundred dollars, right? It's not, it, it's, it's, it's an investment, right? But it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great soldering iron and like it will save you so much time. It, it becomes worth it. And I use the chisel tip on there and that is like the most versatile tip that you can have. You can, you can heat up uh, large pads. You can heat up small pads. A lot of guys like think that pe the, the pencil pointy tip is the good one, but the chisel tip is the, is the one to go with. So this, this siren iron is temperature controlled. Like it will do, you know, 10 gauge wire and it'll do a little teeny wire and like you'll not have any issues with it. You want some good, good quality solder. So this is the MG Chemicals, um, 60, 40 leaded solder. I really like using leaded solder. And the reason I like using leaded solder, uh, with, with, you know, that's good with a good flux inside of it, like MG Chemicals is because it flows really, really nicely and it makes it, it makes it, uh, easier and leaded solder, um, you know, everybody thinks that we went away from let it because, you know, the, the new stuff is safer. Well, it melts at a higher temperature, the new stuff. So it becomes, it's a real pain in the butt with, to work with the, the new solder. That's the, the silver, uh, silver solder. And the other thing is the, uh, this stuff's safer to use, believe it or not, because the, the flux that goes in the, in the core, the rosin, the, the, yeah, the rosin core flux that goes in here, it's a non non carcinogenic as opposed to the flux that goes in your your uh, silver solder, which is, is is highly carcinogenic, and you're not supposed to breathe that stuff. So I would much rather work with this and just know that I'm not supposed to eat it than to work with something that's going to smoke flux that's going to cause me to get cancer. That's you know personal opinion, but this is kind of an optional tool here. I I really like this tool for holding my. Uh, my XT60 connectors when I when I solder them, uh, so you just pop that bad boy in there, squeeze it tight, and it's just, it kind of holds it in place. So you know it's, and you can do uh, bullet connectors, XT90, like the whole thing. Like it's been a pretty good tool. Um, I knew that I was doing the right thing when with this when I saw like that you know some professional factories actually had these on their floor, and I was like ah, that's cool. Um, so you're gonna need a a heat gun it's not really completely necessary but to to shrink shrink tube correctly you should have you know it's a 20 dollar heat gun um i don't actually have a, a link for this one i bought this one at, at home depot but you can use a lighter if you want but uh you know a good quality heat gun will, will get you uh, a nice even shrink on things that you just sometimes it's it's good to have the 20 dollar tool versus trying to save yourself a little a, a few bucks so um, you need a, you're going to, this is also an optional tool, but you probably really want one, a multimeter and it, you don't really need a, a super high quality multimeter for doing the work that we do. Like this is a, you know, 10, $15 multimeter. Um, I don't even know if it does auto scaling. It, it, it basically, you just need to be able to test voltage and for continuity. And like that's, that's all that I'm using the multimeters for in the mini quad realm um what else do we got here oh this is a camera lens you don't need that but that's for my camera here oh focus focus so much fun okay all right done with that um <laughs> a pair of scissors uh nice pair of scissors is always good for cut and shrink tube and you know whatever you can use your side snips 
a pair of nice side snips. Oh my gosh. I'll put a link in for these side snips. I think they're just a few bucks and totally worth it for a pair of nice side snips. You can use these to cut the shrink too, but either two, you don't really need the scissors, but uh, you will need side snips to cut wire. And uh, I mean, you could use, you can use your strippers to cut wire, but like these make a nice clean cut. Uh, this is kind of an optional tool to pair of helping hands. I got these from Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. Um, this is one of my favorite toolkits, uh, period. You can find a couple different examples of this. I think this one came from Sparkfun. This one is well loved. I've been using it for uh, like three years now and it's uh, starting to fall apart finally, but all the, the or at least the case is. But anyway, the 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 tools that are in there are, you know, it's, it's pretty much everything that you need for mini quads. Uh, this is another tool that uh, I would highly recommend as well. It's a, uh, I think, uh, Horizon Hobby makes it, um, but basically it's, it's just kind of all of these tools compacted into one. But if I, if I could just pick one tool to have at the field, it would be, it would be this kit because it's got everything in it. Um, this is a little bit more uh, convenient to use, I guess, and it's, it's, it's more compact. So, uh, nice pair of tweezers is always handy razor blade a uh, set of uh, wire strippers I have two here I have like this one for really fine stuff and I have this one for wider stuff and a uh, pair of pliers so um, I, a nice pair of like small needle nose pliers like the you know tweezers are good for a lot of things but if you really use them like the way that these are designed to be used you're gonna bend your tweezers all up so you know these are for like positioning things and you know, but they're not pliers. These are pliers. These are tweezers. Tweezers are for moving things around. Pliers are for bending and like doing like, you know, heavier duty stuff. So for those of you that borrow my tools, know the difference. These are just for like fine tuning adjustments. These are for heavier stuff. Don't bend my tweezers. So, <laughs> all right, that's it. Uh, so that's all the gear. Hopefully, Hopefully I, I covered everything for this build and this is going to drop on Friday and then the actual build will either be on Monday or the following Friday depending on when, uh, you know, I talked to Secret Weapons and they're supposed to get these frames back in stock uh, early next week so uh, you guys can get them. Uh, but uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, please, please uh, share this, hit that like and subscribe button, and uh, I look forward to doing this build. Sorry, I always just think this is a really cool effect when I when I put my wide angle on. So, I'm popping that in there. Ooh, ooh. Okay, done playing around. <laughs>